Yo, there's a new Turtles book. Dope. Whoa. What the f is that? Greetings children of the screen, your friendly neighborhood nerd scum here once again coming at you with another quick thoughts video. This time taking a look at Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one, by Manning, Thomas, and Breckel. We open on a young man following his GPS into a dark alley for some reason where he discovers a horde of mutated silverfish, they attack him and he flees. We then go down to the sewer where the turtles are in awe of their new weapons discovered in an ancient city beneath Manhattan. Too bad, that would have been fun to see. They are so enthralled with their new weapons they don't even notice when April enters delivering a huge monologue about battling a mutated mosquito and the hazards of grease fires. Realizing they pay no attention to her, she exits to get cleaned up. Looking for any excuse to try out their new weapons, the turtles declare that April is missing. With that, they take up their new weapons and head to the rooftops. April soon returns, but after a short exchange with Master Splinter, she suddenly and inexplicably remembers the mosquito with the power to mutate people and snatches up a conveniently placed baseball bat heading out to hunt the beast. On the rooftops, the turtles play with their new weapons under the guise of mastering them to save April. In the process, Raphael manages to knock over a water tower. In an attempt to save him by splitting it in half, Leonardo jumps through the air with his sword, which opens up a portal, teleporting him off the roof of the building, plummeting to his death, but luckily he's saved by Mikey at the last minute. On the streets below, April has located the mutagen mosquito and pursues it in an ongoing chain of unfunny jokes. Back on the rooftop, suddenly out of nowhere, the mutant silverfish appear and attack. The turtles spring into action with their new weapons, but in response, a large number of the silverfish can join, forming one large creature. Perfectly utilizing their weapons that they had no idea how to use two pages ago, the turtles engage. During the course of the fight, they're either able to break the creature back down into its smaller components, or the creature just vanishes altogether. It's really unclear. But then they run into April, who uses her trusty bat to aid them in taking down the rest of the silverfish. I guess it's a good thing that they had those new weapons when a typical baseball bat could do the trick. With the battle seemingly done, the turtles head back home in triumph as more of the mutant silverfish terrorize the streets. And that is where this issue leaves us off. In terms of the style that they're going for, I suppose the art in this book is passable. However, the character models are hideous. They're uninviting and unengaging. Uh, beyond that, the sequential art fails multiple times, leaving you completely confused within the scheme of the panels as to what's actually happening in the action sequences. It honestly feels like more effort was put into trying to make this different than was put into trying to make it good or tell a real story. Look, I know this book is geared towards children, but even in that regard, it falls flat on its face. It fails to establish the backstory of the characters, to get forth any characterization of the individuals that are completely indistinguishable from one another, and it fails to like add in any of the philosophy or the dedication that makes the turtles who they are. Beyond that, the overall story in of itself is seemingly pointless, while in the first couple of pages they give reference to a much more interesting story, which I imagine is going to be the pilot of the show that this is based off of. In conclusion, guys, this book is not completely horrible. The lettering is very competent, and the color palette is very nice, although it can't do anything to help the just absolutely garish character designs. Basically, if you've ever wanted Ninja Turtles but drawn like Ed, Ed, and Eddie and written like Teen Titans Go, then this is for you. Otherwise, I'd steer clear of it, alright? This book was awful. So this week, it is going to be getting one and a half GGs and a recommendation to keep this mindless half ass dribble away from your kids. But that's just what I thought, guys. Did y'all check out this book this week? Did you like it? Let me know down in the comments below what you thought. And if you like this video, please leave a like, you know, and uh, share it with some friends. That's more important now than ever with everything YouTube's changing up on small YouTubers like myself. Uh, furthermore, guys, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that little bell so you can get updates on all the dope content I'll have coming out in the future. And finally, guys, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or on Twitter, I will have the link for both of those in the description below. Thank you very much, children of the screen. I hope you all have a great night. Nerd scum.